What's up, Yoda Tech? Chef Yoda 4x4. Okay, this is uh, broken down a little bit again because... Uh, <laughs> because I realized only upon installing the thing, which I could have known, could have noticed before I even turned it on, <laughs> not to mention it might not have worked, that the one in the donor climate control assembly that I got, which is this, um, the fan control, you know, speed control for the fan motor, um, was a three speed. <laughs> so it was from a base pickup. Um, this is a four speed one or, you know, a different year, 86 or something like that. Maybe, uh, this one has four, as you can clearly see. So I replaced it. Uh, this model actually, uh, the one that I took the other one out of, I'll show you. Okay. This one, as you can see now, has a dimple. Uh, it's not, it's not a, um, screw or two screws like mine. Uh, mine's all also bigger. So I was a little worried that it might not fit, but, uh, you can see here that it has. It not only fit, but I routed it, routed the wiring back through and it's all good to go. Um, all the climate control buttons are working. So I wanted to show you that as well. So with the key on, uh, and then the light, I couldn't get the light to work. Uh, I pried the contact inside out a little bit after, you know, turning the key off, obviously, because you don't want to, uh, and making sure that the lights aren't on, but you don't want to contact or short that out because it will short out your, uh, I believe it all runs off the parking lights, uh, circuit. So anyway, now I have the light. Okay. It's really not showing very well, but uh, I cleaned the face really well uh, because I wanted as, you know, optimal illumination, <laughs> but uh, it's working. So it's working and it fades with the, uh, with the dimmer switch, which I also replaced not long ago. Okay. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is this is different than mine in not in fitment. It fits exactly where the other one fit, but it is different in a couple of ways. Uh, um, none that really should concern you. The cables are all the exact same length. That's the main thing you want to make sure if you pull one out at a yard. Um, so basically I wanted to go through this again really quick. Uh, you remove the clock, unplug it from the back, um, after removing the climate face, obviously the climate uh, climate control display. So that is one that needs to go on um, pretty much straight. Uh, I found that trying to get it on um, like this, like at an angle, and sticking that this little foot in there. Uh, not sure if you can even see that. Yeah, sticking that little thing in there in the in the hole there, it doesn't really work well, especially once you get the clock in there and everything else. So get all of your levers straight out is the best way I found. Uh, make sure your AC button is screwed tight again into the into the face up here, and that the anchor pegs off the side of it, those two little steel uh, or aluminum looking things there actually hold on to this so they're like an extra support so then you slide this over like this and and start to you could start to um, actually bend the thing a little bit I'm not gonna put it in yet because I gotta put the clock in but then you once you got it there that one will kind of go in there into that peg spot right over there and then you just keep pushing until these uh, oop, right there pop into place so that's pretty simple. Um, I have a bunch of these bulbs, uh, the green and even some clear ones. I was going to try clear, but I like the green. I like the whole green look, and uh, I've cleaned all the displays and everything behind and all the bulbs. Uh, it really, really brightened up my um, dash. They get a, they get cloudy over time, so 
if you use a little of that lens cleaner or something like that, similar to that arm, uh, you know, protectant, it actually worked quite well. So, um, you're actually going to pop the climate face off, um, which I found worked best when I went from the top and pried it down in these corners right here. And then it started to come out a little bit. And then I, um, went from this side and pushed it till it started to bow out a little bit. And then once it started to bow a little bit, I took a separate screwdriver from the top and just pop and it popped right off. They come right off pretty easy, but you don't want to break those little pegs. So you get that off. Let me turn the slide off. Okay. Then you want to, this is the clock screw right here. Then you want to remove these three right here. Uh, first, remove the AC button and pull it out towards you. Um, then remove all three of these screws. And uh, before you do anything else, go through and, and remove, excuse me, all the cables that I showed you. Um, there's one on the climate face right in here. So you're going to pull the, da the, the glove down, um, pop the thing out if you have a protective sheet back there, and then pry it out so that the glove actually falls all the way down and you'll see right there on the side of the um, vent and recirculation vent uh, where it actually shuts off and allows uh, fresh air in or not. Um, you'll see that cable. You remove that cable, pop it out of its clip, do the same down here for this one. Then do the same down here for this one. And then you do the same one for the blue one, which actually goes into the engine bay, which anyone, you know, should know how that disconnects. And then you will be able to, you know, eventually pull that out when you're ready. Um, now you're going to, you can unscrew all these and do that first or pull your bezel if you want first. So obviously you would pull the bezel out a bit. I have a switch in mine, uh, which I now wish I hadn't. <laughs> done I, I'm actually kind of thinking about moving the switch um, over here or you know something like this but then I'd have to cut a perfect hole uh, for the switch and I've got it you know cut pretty nice uh, actually to fit through one of the pop uh, pop covers that go through Toyota stock stuff so now I could pop that out as well and you can see the switch on the back so I have the switch on the back like that, and then I have these um, that go to the switch. They're kind of short, so I'm going to eventually lengthen that. But anyway, okay, once you have pulled the radio bezel off, uh, this gives you a lot of room. Now, you can reach in there. You're going to also have this down in order to unplug the main plug to the speed, fan speed uh, switch, and then the other uh, clip, which is a gray one right there which is to the light. That's what the light is. So, and it allows it to connect to the dimmer as well. It's all on the same circuit. So then you will, like I said, have these removed. You will have removed all of those from their posts. There's little eyelets, as you could see on the end of every cable. And um, then you will have these removed and this will be kind of sloppy at that point. Um, then you're going to want to take this and push it in as far as it can go, it's, which isn't very far. It actually doesn't want to go very far before it hits the uh, uh, the air box in the back. So um, you're going to push it as far back as you can. And then from this side, you take a, screw, a flathead screwdriver or something and use just very carefully. This is going to be pulled out of the way, so you'll have a hole right here. And uh, I used a little piece of wood, and I stuck the screwdriver there up against it, and I just kind of pried it um, uh, out. And then uh, I actually came back out with some uh, chopsticks. So the chopsticks worked really well. They're rigid, and if they break, big deal. I'd rather them break than my climate control assembly, right? So <laughs> I pried that over um, uh until once I had this pushed in and over as far as I could, which was almost to here, believe it or not, before, because remember the, the pegs are all the way to here. 
right here where these screws are. So this has to come over to about here. And once I got it to there, I was able to finally pry this out to the outside. Once I got it to the outside, it was easy to kind of manipulate it up and down and get it out. Now, if yours is broken like mine was at this bottom arm, which is actually the temperature lever, which also controls the heater core valve, uh, con heater control valve, and the um, the gate for switching from heater core to AC. Um, if yours is all fuggled like mine was, then you're going to have, it's going to be bent severely. Like it looked basically like this, where it was hanging down a lot instead of where it's supposed to be like that with a little up at the end. Um, so it made it difficult to get it out, but I basically just reached under here and pushed the arm up and, and kind of forced it out as it was coming out of, of its last step. And once I got it, through there a little bit uh, it, it slides right out you can see that it will clear just a little bit of spatial issue but it's made up for on the top see which is where your climate thing pops in and uh, so once you get it you know past this tooth and this tooth right here you kind of wiggle up and down to get it out and then this, do the same with uh, this one and then by then this one is just cake the whole thing will come out. Um, usually, you'll, like with me, I got it out and it started hanging up on things and wanting to grab. You know, the cables are under tension, so they want to come up and, and just straight, you know, from wherever they were, even after all this time. So they did keep catching on things, but I just wiggle it loose and it, and it would come free. So um, eventually it came out and the thing goes in the same way where you push it in this way and slide it past. Let the camera adjust there. Slide it past here. And then force it in here, which is really a little bit more difficult than it was coming out. Um, and then get it into there. And there's a little peg right here that will actually, a cog, uh, that will actually, uh, well, a dowel that will actually hold in that hole, dowel hole. Um, and then I just barely started the screws so that I could, uh, you know, manipulate it a bit. But I also... What's really important is that you do the routing. So you note the routing exactly as you're taking these out uh, as to where the routing for the cables goes. Because if you don't, they're not long enough or they're too long or, you know, you're going to run into all kinds of problems with them working properly. So uh, now you can see when I have the key on. Let's see. Okay, so that's one. Two, three, four. And four is definitely higher than the three speed one's top speed, and the low is definitely lower than the top speed, uh, than the lowest speed for the three speed um, switch. So I recommend you definitely switching that over if you can find one in the yard. You'll see that it's a bigger model, and I can actually probably get you the number here. All right. Uh, let's see if we can focus here. That's not focusing. Anyway. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so that's the one you want in order to have a four speed. And it will connect directly to that connector uh, just fine without any trouble at all. So, like I said, I highly recommend um, swapping this out if you've had trouble with yours for a while. I mean, what, what have you got to lose? The thing that you have now is a piece of crap that's barely working anyway. You can always reach down, open any gate that you want by hand fairly simply. Um, but then again, that's the whole point of doing this is the convenience of uh, having it work. <laughs> uh, and you know what? It's, you know, it's something I could have lived without, but come on, man, it's an SR5 loaded with everything. And I, I wanted to make uh, use of every little gadget it has. So that's that for now. Um, like I said, uh, I actually, without removing any of these screws at all, I managed to pull this motor by pulling the screw 
one screw out of the other model um, because it had a little dowel there. This one has two screws, which I feel better about anyway. Um, but they it did fit onto the other model, which I, you know, is now replacing the one I had. See? So the AC button works and all that. Just make sure everything works. When you're gonna when you're hooking this in, run the cables in there, you know, just to get it, get them in there and out of the way, close enough to where you can plug things in. Uh, or even try and plug it in from the bottom here and just plug it into the plugs and make sure that the fan motor works or the fan switch works and that the light works uh, because my light did not work. <laughs> and uh, that was a little frustrating at first, but I actually got in there and cleaned, you know, pulled out the pin on the new donor uh, or the, um, the slides on the actual socket itself. And then it worked fine. So both bulbs worked. It actually worked on, on uh, the one that was in there as well. I thought it was the bulb. Um, and like I said, I have several of these dash bulbs, etc. If anybody, you know, wants to save a couple bucks and just needs one or two, that's fine. Don't ask me for all of them, but <laughs> I like to keep a few spares. But um, anyway, that's that for the climate control assembly, removal, and installation. It's very simple without pulling your dash or anything else. All right.